How accurate is the photogrammetry result you get from flying your drone over a location, a standard consumer drone, and how usable are the results? Can you actually take reasonable and realistic measurements, or are the results not accurate enough? Is it something you can actually trust, or is it not? In this video, I'm going to be testing the accuracy of three drones, the DJI Mini 4 Pro, the Mavic 3, and the Air 3. Each of these drones I'm going to check against real measurements with a measuring tape and see how closely they compare. And hopefully by the end of this video, we will know how usable the measurements from photogrammetry is from actually flying real drones. So just out of curiosity, I'm also going to try the Mini 4 Pro with a wide angle lens versus the other drones. Now keep in mind when I do this on the Air 3, the Air 3 does actually use the same sensor and camera assembly as the Mini 4 Pro for its main camera. So that way we can compare and see if a wide angle lens actually affects the results in terms of measurements. However, in my experience, the wide angle lens actually does a better job at creating 3D models, especially in tight areas where you cannot get as consistent overlap. So you may have noticed I'm not actually using like an automated flight planner, something like waypointmap.com, even though like the Air 3, the Mavic 3, and the Mini 4 Pro support automated missions with waypointmap.com. It's just, there's actually a slight issue with just how close I'm flying to this building that could potentially cause issues. And that actually gets us into positional error as well. So GPSs on these drones are only relatively accurate to about a meter, they say. And positionally, which means, you know, that latitude and longitude, it directly correlates to to about 10 meters. Now, in reality, when you fly your drone, your drone doesn't magically think it's 10 meters over. It is like an error that compounds over time. So one day it may be, you know, zero, zero, and the next day it might be like one, one. It just depends. So that way, you know, using Waypoint Map, the inbuilt GPS is of course going to potentially think it's all over that place. However, that does get us into the importance of using RTK for that positional accuracy, because if you are trying to measure something day to day over and over and you want to see how much something's actually moving, um, especially when it's referenced to the rest of the world. You want something like PPK or RTK in order to get that actual positional accuracy down. And if you're really interested in doing that, I have an any drone RTK module that will allow you to add that functionality to your pre-existing drone. And the any drone RTK gets about three centimeters of accuracy with the whole system. And that's without an external third party base station. So for testing today, I actually chose my back deck. And this way we can see a lot of like hard angles and things that should at least show up in the photogrammetry results. Namely these tables and this railing I think are really good examples because they should show up very sharply, especially with limited range. I'm also restricted behind me on where the drone's flying by some trees, so there's only a very limited range I can actually fly in. So then I just went through and I flew the mission for each of the drones. I went out, it was the same weather, it was actually an overcast day, which ends up being better for photogrammetry, and then we're going to process the final results. So next up I'm going to use my software aerialmodel.com to select each of the images for each of the sets from each drone. So the Mini 4 Pro, I'm going to select all those images of this deck, and then I'm going to process those out into a 3D model, and I'm going to do the same for each of the drones, and that way we can compare each drone, is there differences between each of the sensors, etc., or is it all the same? So let's wait for this to process. Also, since we're actually focusing on measurements in today's video, I want to talk about a little bit of a disclaimer it's important to make. My home state, North Carolina in the United States, has had a case go through the court system basically prohibiting people from making 3D models and maps from anyone other than a licensed land surveyor which is quite interesting given that licensed land surveyors can't directly use the stuff they scanned from a drone and pass it off as survey data to a client. I think this doesn't necessarily apply to the people that go through and do this internally, so if you're a company and you have someone that flies a drone, but I do think it's kind of ridiculous that they are prohibiting all drone photogrammetry when drone surveyors themselves cannot actually go through and directly use data that comes out of these sensors. So I want to make sure that you all know that if you're going to be passing off, especially measurements of all things, I'd be highly careful because I don't want anyone to watch this video, think that they can start sending these off as, you know, reliable measurements without having, you know, some at least knowledge of what's going on and getting in any trouble. I just want to make sure that you're careful about how you pass off this data that you may collect from 3D scanning. 
I should also add that if you're planning on creating 3D models, you should at least have a drone that has some type of inbuilt GPS system and that also attaches those GPS coordinates to the metadata on each picture. Without that, the models will actually come out with no basis on reality. While yes, it may not be officially licensed by a surveyor or may not be measured properly. By the end of the day, if you don't have that GPS metadata in your pictures, you can get something that might be like 30 meters coming across as a meter. And that's not realistic or even remotely usable for the kind of applications you may as an individual be looking at using it for. So I've gone through and I've applied the measurements that we did in the... So I've gone through and applied all the measurements um, to each of the photos. You may notice that this looks really good. This is the DJI Mini 4 Pro with that wide angle lens. And to show you how much better it did, we can look at some of the other ones. And they don't look as good. They didn't collect as much data. And obviously this one collected even less data. I really do think that the wide angle lens, especially even sometimes when you are in a constrained environment will often produce better results, in my opinion, just because of how much more overlap it can provide. And also noticeably, um, the measurements do differ quite a good bit. Um, you may notice that like on one end, we have 1.63 meters here. And on the lower end, we have 1.4 with the Mavic 3, which I think the Mavic 3 arguably has a better sensor. And I know that if I applied the wide angle lens to that, it probably would have similar results. It's just interesting to see that there is that big of a difference. This one's closer, in my opinion, but it also is somewhat subjective on which point you select as the end of the table. So with that being said, let's go through and start comparing them. So first up, we're gonna measure this table, which this is in inches, so for everyone else, I'm going to convert this over to metric, um, which is actually what I'm gonna use in the software, which is about 65 inches. So the table's actual measurement is 1.651 meters, which means that this is only 0 0.0, let's say roughly two off from the actual result, so pretty dang accurate. And then also we can take a look here and then over here, it looks like it's 41 inches. So there we go. So it's about 1.03 meters there. So we take a look at the actual measurement here and it's about 1.04. So just again, the wide angle lens on the DJI Mini 4 Pro, the cheapest drone of them all, is looking like it is the most accurate. So then we take a look at this and this is almost 0.1 off. Um, and then you come over here, and this is even more off. This is quite a bit off. Like, what is this, one point? Yeah, 0.2 meters off. So I think not only does this show you that I think the Mavic 3 sensor is probably superior, it shows you that the cheapest drone is still more than capable of producing very high quality results. And also, I'm sure the more pictures that you throw in here, the better as well. So highly recommend a wide angle lens if you're looking at actually using it um, for measurements and then also we can take a look at a couple other things this little thing here is about six inches the width of the railing banister is 0.17 here so again 0.2 off 0.02 off versus if we look at the um, thing here this is about point yeah this is about almost 0.4 off and then we look at this this is this is a little bit under 0 0.03 off so not too big but then again that's a pretty small area this is about 20 and a half inches so the little table in the back here is the actual measurement is 0.52 meters which this is 0.5 so again 0 0.02 off we take a look here this is a little bit closer actually this time it depends on how you want to draw the point um, and then also back here this is also got a little deformed but we can maybe push it up but still this measurement is still quite a bit, bit off the mavic 3 i think it has the smallest field of view and it looks like that did the worst out of everything this table over here is about 28 inches next up is the width of this little table over here and this little table is measured as 0.71 which means that this is a little bit off, and I think that depends on how you want to do it. But as you can tell, where the points are not as clear is where you actually get some difficulty measuring. The table over here is 0.85 meters, which again depends on where you want to select that edge of that table. And then finally, this one's 0.62. So it still looks like the DJI Mini 4 Pro with that wide-angle lens is the best out of all of them. 
This whole deck here is 147 inches. Next up is the banister railing. And the actual measurement of this is about 3. Point, it looks like 3.68. Now, if I actually select the last possible pixel that I think this is, it looks like maybe over here, it does get closer to reality. It's about 3.73 is the actual measurement. And then if I select the last end of the pixel, yeah, it's about 3.72. So if you select the last possible pixel that you generates, then yeah, but um, I would say it's still pretty good versus if we look over here, we take a look at this. This is registered as I uh, move this across. 3.54 meters, which is almost 0.2 plus meters uh, off. And then we look at this, 3.14. This is almost half a meter off. Yeah, I think this is actually half a meter off. Good gosh. That's not something that I can, like, fudge up. Those measurements are, I mean, really, I don't know. It looks like something maybe glitched out there. But no, that's very clearly more than half a meter off um in just that situation so i guess we can look at this last one real quick we got the table here which looks like it comes up to about 28 inches and the height of the table so the actual height is 0.71 and that looks about accurate then we come over here and it's about 0.65 so about 0 0.606 off and then this is almost 0.1 off so the height there so honestly it's very surprising just how much of a difference not only between drones you get in measurements but also like the kind of setup that you have because i think this just goes to show that the cheapest drone out of all of these the mini 4 pro it has the same sensor as the uh, air 3 so it's not like it's some magical sensor difference it's literally just how you take the pictures where you take the pictures and also how much overlap it can get when it references the pictures. So a wide angle lens looks like it's actually a lot better, especially in limited circumstances when you're trying to go through and create 3D models for that accuracy. I'm actually very surprised by just how much of a difference across three different drones that makes. So overall, I'd highly recommend that if you want to get into even more accuracy, I'll do a follow-up video when I actually have the RTK module completely finished and launched, and then we can actually see how that influences the accuracy again between the different drones. And I think that also will increase the not only positional accuracy, but also the relative accuracy between these points as well, because that GPS is a lot higher precision as well, and it doesn't actually drift during your flight.